please welcome Mark Dawson. Thank you. Wow. What a great team. Was there a difference in energy from the first time I came up as opposed to the second time? Which one did you like better? The last one where you were involved. <laughs> now, how often when you come to work do, you, do, do your teams cheer for you like that? <laughs> I said that in a seminar not long ago, and they said, yeah, quitting time. <laughs> Motivation. Motivation is really all about energy. It's all about energy. Now, I'm a pretty simple guy. Uh, I've never been the sharpest tool in the toolbox, and I'm willing to admit that. I graduated high school in a very small town in central Wisconsin. And if it wasn't for me, there would not have been an upper part of my class. I'll let you think about that one. But I've never been the sharpest tool in the toolbox. What I have been able to do, though, is just simplify things. People have overcomplicated life. They overcomplicate work. They overcomplicate leadership. Things aren't that complicated. They're difficult, hard maybe, but not that complicated. I'm also kind of a realist. You know, some people say the glass is half full. Some say it's half empty. To me, it's just the wrong size glass. Ability. Everyone's motivated. Just different levels. Some people motivated to watch Jerry Springer all day. Some people motivated to come out and learn new things. I ran the Austin, or the Motorola Marathon a couple years ago. And going through one of the water stops about halfway through it. And I hear this woman, she looks at another woman and says, can you believe they pay to do this? I mean, some people are just going to sit on the sidelines and complain all the time. But I want to share a couple of ideas that will help you maybe get some people off the sidelines, maybe even yourselves, to get a little further down the road in achieving some of the success that you want. And she says, Steve, you've got to get up for school. He says, I don't want to go to school. Rolls over. She comes back about five minutes later. She says, Steve, you've got to get up. You're going to be late. He said, I don't want to go to school. Tell me why I should go. There's probably 100 teachers in that school. None of them likes me. There's got to be a couple thousand students, and I can't think of one of them that likes me. Tell me why I should go. She said, well, I'll give you two reasons. Number one, you're 42 years old. Number two, you're the principal. <laughs> there was a Gallup poll that showed two out of three adults don't like to go to work. Two out of three people don't like to go to work. And a lot of you see that. Some of you are in here. And it's not that they don't like what they do. They don't like where they do it. The culture, the climate, the boss, something about where they do it. And it's our jobs to get those people back on the road to wanting to be productive, to wanting to come to work. Success, but then build individuals, how you communicate with people, how you praise, how you give feedback, how you uh, give compliments. People just want to make them just feel good. If you just go to work every day and you just, your main focus is helping people feel good about themselves, and it can be very simple, even just paying compliments. You know, you've got to be sincere. But a friend of mine taught me that eventually everyone you know is going to say, do, or wear something you do like. And I just wait for those opportunities, right? I mean, I, I can come up and I can say, wow, that's a great color shirt. I like that, right? Now, I never said on him. <laughs> I mean, teasing, but I like blue, so it's easy for me to say uh, you know, any, that in blue, I like that color. You can find easy ways to help people feel good about themselves. Washington, one of my favorite cities. When I come into an organization or a new city, one of my favorite things to do is walk around and kind of get a feel for the environment, the people. Well, one of my visits to Washington, and I'm walking down along the mall, and I walk by the reflection pond. And I look down, and there's a penny laying there. Someone obviously missed the target. So as I reach down, I pick up the penny. I look up, and there is the Lincoln Memorial right in front of me. Now, you all should have some pennies on your table. What's on the back of a penny? Look at the back of that penny. Tell me what's on the back of it. What do you see? Lincoln Memorial. Put it all back here. What are some things you see in the back of the penny? One cent. Lincoln Memorial. E pluribus unum. Yes, how many see Lincoln? Take a close look. Isn't Lincoln there? Yeah. You have to focus on it. Now, how many of you have been to the Lincoln Memorial? How large is the statue of Lincoln? This is not to scale, is it? 
The reality of it, Lincoln is much larger. The reality of coaching is that we need to be able to focus on the individual. Sometimes we have to be able to look past the structure. I'm here to talk about coaching, and coaching is a two-sided coin. Right? It is a partnership, and we have to be able to look past all the structure and all the things and see the person. Does anyone deal with some of those? There was a survey that showed two out of three people don't like to go to work. Some of you might be sitting next to those. I hope not. But the flip side of that survey also showed that only one in three people even like who they are. So if you look at the person on each side of you, only one of you has got it going on. <laughs> you decide. They use them with great intention. I know a lot of you have coaching, mentoring, and counseling programs. The problem is we put people in a coaching position without training them to do the job. We ask people to be mentors or coaches, and they don't even know how to have a conversation. Okay. We set them up to fail. So the will is there, but they don't have the skill. I look at leadership as leaders are coaches. And that's why I don't like all, that all these words come in there. Leaders are coaches. Coaches are leaders. I look at coaching. Anyone on, does anyone know what sports are involved or what activities are involved with a sport of triathlon? Swimming, biking, and running. But yes, some people still see those as three sports. Triathlon is one sport. You have to be proficient at three activities to be good at the sport. If you're not a good swimmer, you won't be a good triathlete. I see leadership the same way. You have to be skilled in coaching, mentoring, and counseling to be an effective leader. Now, yes, they are all one and the same. So when we look at what to coach or what the coaching position, we have to understand how important it is and what it takes to coach. I do think there are some things that have to be in place to be an effective coach. I think, number one, you have to like yourself. If you don't like yourself, you're not going to like others. We talk to others how we talk to ourselves. Number two, you have to be able to really like seeing people succeed. That's really what the job of a coach is, is helping others be successful. If you don't like to see others succeed, you are sure not going to be effective as a coach. What I've learned is that A's hire A's and B's hire C's. A's hire A's and B's hire C's. Not A personality types, but A's being top achieving, fully functioning, positive, caring, helping people want to be around other people like that, don't you? You would say yes here because you're supposed to be A's, yes. <laughs> but B's, not quite achieving people, want to be around people that aren't quite, quite achieving. And a, and a B will always do what it takes to make sure a C never becomes a B or an A. Right? So you have to be someone who likes the other people achieve. You have to understand that coaching is a process. You won't see success right away, and everyone won't achieve the same things. In track and field, someone can run a race and have the best race of their career and not win, come in dead last. You can still put your arm around them and congratulate them because they did the best they could. That's what I like about marathon running. Uh, marathon running, the last place person gets the exact same medal as the first place person because they did the best with what they could. And that's what coaches need to understand. Coaching isn't so much what you do, but how you think. And we need to change the way we think about how to lead people. But that means changing how many of us have done things. And change isn't easy. I'll give you an example. I'd like a volunteer. I saw a hand there. And your name? What, Angela? Angela, would you come up here, please? Give her a hand. Give her some appreciation. And Angela. This is for you. And that's it. Have a seat. <laughs> Not bad. A few seconds work. Prize. Now, why didn't everyone in the room volunteer? When I said I want to volunteer, how come everyone didn't say, Oh, Mark, take me. Oh, Mark, take me. <laughs> why didn't everyone react that way? Didn't know what you're going to have to do. Fear of the unknown. Now, you don't know me. You don't know what I might have you do, right? There's a trust factor. Maybe self-esteem, confidence. But we need to be willing to try new things and do things in a different way. Throw it in the air. All right, now when we're done with this, I want everyone in here to pick one of those up. Look at the dates on it. At the first date, call that person. Just say, did you do it? And hang up. <laughs> on the second date, call them again. Say, did you do it? And hang up. <laughs> 